Hello Vinyl community, I'm back to do a recent Vinyl Finds video uh, and I was up really early this morning and I just had my coffee and fixed my hair for you, all of you, yes, and, and uh, uh, the reason is I, it was my birthday yesterday and uh, it happened to also be the day that my new receiver or amplifier uh, arrived so I, I brought that home yesterday. Uh, yeah, I've ordered ordered it from a store. I've I've uh, tried three different amplifiers out, and and uh, but decided on this one, which I haven't tried out, which is just stupid. But I think that yeah, I'll, I'll return it if it's it's not good. But I've read a lot about, it and I think that this is the amplifier for me. Fuck it. Um, so so yeah, that was neat. But we had some people over last night, and I wasn't able to to set the thing up. And uh, so I was like a kid on on Christmas this morning. Uh, I woke up really early, just wanted to to set everything up and start listening. And when I did, uh, it didn't have the power cord uh, with it. It came without a power cord. You have to buy that separately, and I had no idea about that because I I borrowed demo X uh, demo stuff from the store to check out um, back here at home and and they they always supplied a power cord and uh, now it came in a box and the box didn't have a power cord so i have to go into town in an hour to to uh, to get one so i'll maybe i'll talk a little bit about that amplifier later on uh, fingers crossed it's it's as good as i've read uh, and uh, suits my my setup uh, so I'm thinking it, it will do it's a huge investment for me um, but I think that the collection deserves good sound and now uh, I don't get that with the amplifier I have today but the deal is I have some records that I bought pretty cheap and I want to show them before I, I file them I have uh, stacked up with uh, uh, some really really good Things, both reissues and, and uh, original uh, records. Uh, it's like um, I did a, two trades, one with Christopher, which was awesome. Last week we we just we had we talked online, uh, drank beers, played records from different sides of Sweden, and just pulled some stuff. Decided on a trade, and and he sent me six record seven records and and I sent him five records um, so I'm gonna show those and thank him properly in a one in, in in the next video there was some killer stuff there that's been on my want list for a while and I, I did a another trade with a, a, a guy a prog record that I had in my collection a valuable one that I just thought what was so so and he had a huge want lister that I wanted so we traded it right off. Um, so that's coming up. But the the more cheap ones, uh, if you're interested, uh, I didn't have a copy of Vanilla Fudge, so I bought this uh, '70s reissue. Uh, sounds uh, a bit bit dirty and murky, and and yeah, like like I don't know if it's the pressing or it's the recording quality when they did it. I have nothing to compare with, but uh, it's not the best sound quality that. Uh, you would uh, would wish for because the record is so good. Um, it's a 70s reach on Atco. Uh, I also got this uh, like three bucks. The Jimmy Smith's Grew Grease uh, from 19, I think 72. Yeah, uh, original first press. Um, uh, super happy to get this. It's worth more than three three bucks. And I mean three bucks just for the cover. It's a killer killer cover. The artwork is fantastic on this one. And it's the best Jimmy Smith records I have in my collection, in my opinion. But but I'm not a huge like organ-driven fan. I think that Moon Rapping with Jack McDuff is is the, the best organ-driven jazz record that I have. Uh, but it's okay. Okay, so <clears throat> 2015 Ghost released to Meliora, and uh, they issued it in uh, 500,000 different pressings with different colors and stuff like that. I got the deluxe edition because when it was released, it cost almost as much as the ordinary record, like 250, two, two, uh, uh, 25 bucks or 30 bucks maybe, something like that. So I bought that, saw that it sold pretty high, 
instantly. I got another copy of that box from a dead stock in Malmö. So I had two copies of that. Sold both of them for $220-$250 each. Uh, and I put in an order for this one, but it was out of print. So nine months later, this arrives in the mail. I had no idea almost like that, that I, I've uh, ordered it. <laughs> so in my opinion, their best record. And let's see if this also goes up in uh, price. I will sell this also because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a ghost fan. But if I can sell this for like, like the, the, the box set for 250 bucks and, and buy original like rare stuff for, for that, that, that's a no-brainer for me at least. Um, but it's a good record, pop metal. Um, I got this for free by a friend instead of gas money when we went out crate digging Morning Glory to Sunsworth, 1968, uh, pop, pop psych. It's a pretty decent record. And uh, just to include it in my Vertigo Swirl collection, uh, Jimmy Campbell, uh, half baked from 1971 or 472. And it has some great, some some good some good songs uh, on this one, but it's one of the more common uh, Vertigo Swirl records. I think I paid five bucks for this or something like that. Uh, but you got to have the, the the swirly, the swirly swirl. This was a huge disappointment. Back in 2015, I contacted Morgan Ogren personally to to get. Uh, one of these when they released it. Uh, this is his first solo record uh, from 2015. Morgan Ågren is a musician's musician uh, that comes from, from Sweden, but he's all, all over the globe uh, and doing sessions and and recording with other artists and, and stuff like that. He's an amazing, amazing, amazing guitar uh, drummer. Uh, plays with a band called uh, Mats and Morgan, which is organ and drums fantastic um, so I was super excited of his uh, of his uh, first solo project and when the artwork work came out and I really thought that it would sound like this and uh, man I hoped that it would be but but this is more an experimental electronic record uh, has some parts that is kind of good but most of it is just like uh, and I don't know if it's my disappointment that colors the, the listening experience, but yeah, um, not my cup of tea. I, I, already, I already have it on, like I'm trying to sell it uh, because this is, I'm, I'm not going to keep this. If you want to trade it or something like that, just uh, give me a, uh, a call. I contacted him back in 2015 and we had some SMS back and forth in between, which is just, it's cool because I'm a huge Morgan Morgan fan. So that was cool, but he didn't know how to sell his own record, and it ended up like, yeah, I didn't buy it, and he he stopped like texting, and and he thought like uh, maybe I I put in an order at another store or something like that. So, but I didn't, and uh, when I found this, uh, a guy on face Facebook was selling it uh, like dirt, really dirt cheap. Uh, uh, I jumped on it right away, but uh, now I understand why. Why he's sold it that cheap. Okay, so this one, I've been looking for this for two years, and before that, I saw this like every week in thrift stores for a buck. And when you start to, to looking for it, it's nowhere to be found. And I asked when I came in record stores, I asked, like, you have Frank Sinatra's Cycles from 1968. And everyone's just like, ah, look at the Sinatra records, see if it's there, and, and, and it never was. So I was super happy when I found this. Uh, I won this because of the song Cycles. It's a killer, killer, killer songs, uh, song. Um, I mean, talk about heartbreak. It sounds like he's recording this uh, like three in the, in the morning. Um, with a hangover, almost. It's it's his voice is so fragile, and every word that he uh, gets out of his mouth is just so uh, real and honest. And yeah, if you haven't heard "Cycles," the song by Frank Sinatra, check it out. It's it's like life altering. I have two Frank Sinatra records in the wheel, wee small hours, and this one. And I'm looking for Watertown, which I also saw for a dollar everywhere before but now it's nowhere to be found so 
So really, really looking for a copy of, of uh, that. Uh, this cost me like two bucks now when I found it. So, so yeah. This was, uh, yeah, super happy with this one. Uh, I found a, a first UK press of Queen Crimson's uh, Lizard. Uh, super happy to find uh, to find that in, yeah, near mint condition. It's fantastic. Um, and it was half price. So I think I paid 12 bucks for that, 15 maybe. And uh, the same goes with this. No, no, I bought this like, Eight ten bucks. Uh, nucleus uh, snake ships etc. from nineteen seventy two five five seventy five. Excuse me. Uh, really good like fusion jazz uh, record. Uh, I have a compilation with Nucleus, but other than that, I don't have anything with them. Uh, so yeah, this was really potent jazz fusion. And obviously I'm looking for their first two records on Vertigo Swirl, but they are dirt expensive and always go up in price. Uh, so, uh, but somewhere down the line I'm going to find those also, because those are really the ones that I, I, want, to, I want to get. And the last one is Julie Tippett's with uh, Sunset Glow from 1975 killer lineup on this one and her voice is just to die for really really interest interesting you have um, Keith Tippett also Brian Gooding, uh, Elton Dean Nick Evans yeah that's the ones that I know of first press uh, got it for a good price took a chance on it it's okay uh, Got some some great great songs on it, and her voice is, is to die for. Great musicians, um, so yeah, but not a masterpiece, but it's it's a good one. So now I can uh, archive those in the good old shelves. Um, talk to you soon. Uh, I'll I'll uh, the next one is is gonna be uh, really really good, and I'm gonna give put some time into that, have some some sound samples and stuff like that as usual. So take care, everyone. Have a great day.